Hello, and welcome to a very special episode of Hacking with Friends. My name is Cody Kinsey. I am a security researcher at Veronis, and this is Michael, a cable pusher at Veronis who monitors our live streams and also sometimes hosts this show. I'm watching you, boy. So, Michael, what are we doing today? Uh, today we're going to go over some of our favorite gifts to give that technically inclined person in your life, uh, maybe a hacker or someone that's interested in security, or even more broadly, anyone that's interested in tech of any sort uh, would like a lot of these gifts that we're going to go over. So if you're looking for that sort of person, or maybe you're that sort of person and you want to give your relatives a idea of what you might want this Christmas, mm -hmm. uh, this live stream should be for you. Yeah, so we have divided these gifts into categories, and primarily we've done this by price. Mm -hmm. So first we're going to go over gifts that are $50 or less, then we're going to take mm -hmm. a look at stuff up to $100. After that, we're going to go up to around $100 to uh, $350, and then after that, we'll go over stuff that's kind of $350 plus. Yeah. So these are gifts that anybody who likes hacking or is interested in technical stuff hopefully will like, and in particular, these are a lot of things that we have actually bought and tried out ourselves mm -hmm. and know that they are good. So hopefully we will not lead you astray with any of these because we've actually tried them out and we're not just talking about things that we haven't tried. So uh, yeah, uh, also this is a alternative title for this episode would be how to spend a thousand dollars without even noticing. <laughs> <laughs> the story of Cody's life. Yes. So as you can see on the table, we have a lot of these things here to show mm -hmm. you. So let's go ahead and get started with our first category, which is wireless network adapters. Mm -hmm. So I teach a lot about Wi-Fi hacking. And Michael, what do you think is the most common question I get? Uh, which Wi-Fi adapter do I buy? Yes, because oftentimes you have a computer like this lovely MacBook Pro that does not have a wireless network adapter that lets you do mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff that you're going to want to do when you're getting into hacking. Yeah, and even honestly, even if your laptop is capable of monitor mode, I still recommend uh, a adapter because firstly, you can usually get external antennas so be for better range and reception. And then mm -hmm. additionally, you don't have to give up your internet connection when you're attempting to Wi-Fi hack. Mm -hmm. uh, so that allows you to do like man in the middle attacks and route internet traffic through your laptop. And then it generally just makes troubleshooting so much easier um, as opposed to, okay, now I got to take it out of monitor mode and you know connect to the internet so I can go to Stack Overflow to try to figure out what I've done wrong, right? Mm -hmm. So one recommendation I have for people, if this will load, which I'm not sure it will, uh, is Alpha Wireless. So I'm going to go ahead and just hold this up you while up I, I mean, it's not loaded oh. anything, so there's no point. Um, so Alpha Wireless makes uh, this Wi-Fi mm -hmm. card. This, by the way, is my all-time favorite wireless network adapter made by Alpha. It's the, um, oh my gosh, it's the uh, AWU-S036NHA, affectionately known on my team as the NA. <laughs> so the NA is a 2.4 gigahertz only card. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for 5 gigahertz, this might not be the one for you. But it is a fantastic, really reliable, and very, very well-supported wireless network card that plays very well with mm -hmm. external antennas. So you can plug this into virtually anything, this uh, omnidirectional antenna, a highly directional panel antenna, and it's really, really easy to work with. Now, now you can switch over to my screen. Uh, so if you go to Alpha Wireless, um, they actually have a whole tab dedicated to uh, USB for Kali Linux or uh, Kali Wi-Fi USB, so wireless network adapters for specifically mm -hmm. Kali Linux. So all of these should be supported by Kali Linux, and you don't mm -hmm. need to worry, like, am I going to plug this in and nothing's going to happen? There's a lot of vendors on Amazon that claim to be supported by Kali or whatever. We tested a bunch of them, and um, it did not go yeah, well. That was actually... One of them actually crashed Kali Linux mm -hmm. as soon as you plug it in. So this, you know if you buy something from Alpha Wireless, uh, that it is going to work with Kali Linux if they list it here. And I have tried all of these out, and it turns out there's actually even more uh, than this that are Kali Linux compatible. Um, mm -hmm. My favorite, though, you can see, uh, it looks like it hadn't even loaded all of them yet. My favorite is the TubeU, if you want a personal recommendation. <laughs> uh, the TubeU and the TubeUNA. So I got these two from Alpha Wireless, and I love these. They are, yeah. They're basically made for like boats, I think. But um, they allow you to uh, be like an outdoor style mm -hmm. uh, wireless network adapter that also can um, basically see for a really long range when you add the right adapter. So mm -hmm. I've connected this to a panel grid antenna and made it so that you can actually 
uh, see for, I think we measured it at like almost three to four mm -hmm. miles. It yeah. was really incredible. If you, Honestly, if you want an outdoor setup, you definitely need something like that. Um, oh yeah, you have it on Amazon. Yeah, uh, so going over to my screen. Um, this is all the Alpha and uh, Panda wireless stuff is on Amazon, so you can look it up. Um, we'll try to make this list available in the description of the video below. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so you can see they're about thirty to forty dollars. This one's thirty-seven dollars. If you want something that doesn't have a removable antenna and is a little more discreet, then this little Panda Wireless PAU05 is good. It's a cheaper option. Uh, honestly, this could be a stocking stuffer for anyone that's even interested in like Wi-Fi security because um, it's quick and easy to get started off with. And it's the kind of thing you can take to a coffee shop without immediately getting spotted by the uh, internet police, as it were. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, I actually really like the PAU05. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of my other favorite cards. I would just say that Alpha is my first choice for wireless network adapters. And then as a cheaper mm -hmm. alternative, Panda Wireless is also pretty good. Um, we've worked with them before. They sent us a bunch of samples. All of them mm -hmm. worked, and I found them to be very reliable as well as yeah. relatively discreet, except for that one. That I one was going to say, discreet. if you are not afraid of the internet police, uh, then this is actually a pretty good one. This one does uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Um, I found that to be relatively yeah. stable on Kali mm -hmm. Linux as well. There's a, a couple little hiccups every once in a while, but it's yeah. actually better and doesn't require you to download and mm -hmm. install additional drivers. Uh, oh. to just run as soon as you plug it in. So I actually really recommend that one for, that's the PAU09, yeah. The, the yeah. PAU09, if you need a dual band wireless network mm -hmm. adapter that can be plugged into, for example, this or something like that, yeah. if you wanted to extend the range. So Something uh, I really like about this one too is it's got this little uh, magnetic adapter mount on the bottom with an extension cable. So it allows you, if you were going to do something like war driving or... Uh, uh, something like that, you could mount it on the roof of your car and then have it going into a laptop inside the car or something like that. Obviously, a little sketchy mounting it that way, or you know, you could mount it outside a window, so on and so forth. Yeah, so on a sunny day. Right. So, okay, so then I have another. Well, I'm going to try to actually I'm find it. Go to your screen. Oh, sure. I didn't want you to do that, but you Okay, can. I will. All right, so no, it's fine. So <laughs> here is Simple Wi Fi. Um, I'm oh, hoping no. this is the right website. I but Simple Wi-Fi is uh, one of the partners we've mm -hmm. worked with before. And uh, antennas and accessories. Here we go. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to find the right thing. So they have a variety of Wi-Fi antennas. And you'll see uh, this is the one that we have on our desk. We mm -hmm. got one. This was the display model at DEF CON. And at the end, it was like, hey, hey, guys, do you remember how we, uh, we mentioned you in our one video? Do you think we could have the display model? And they said yes. So uh, this thing is crazy. We mm -hmm. clocked it at, uh, again, like three miles in terms yeah. of like the range of what we can receive. And no, send. that's usually like clear line of sight. Like, yes, you're we on a up, hill somewhere. We went so on a mountain houses. to do this. Uh, and you can see this on uh, the beginning of our YouTube channel also uh, mm -hmm. on the, the episode, like how far can Wi-Fi really travel? We use this. So I really, really like this thing. It's super cool. And if you want to find a great gift, then this dual band Yagi antenna is really great. A um, uh -huh. little higher than our price point, but I just wanted yeah. to mention this is an accessory to any wireless network adapter like that can support additional antennas. So there's some cheaper stuff uh, like this panel antenna right here. This is just like 14 bucks. Yeah. And these are also highly directional. And what that means is you can get one of these uh, like alpha wireless network or uh, panda wireless network adapters that allows you to mount a different, well, where am I? There. Yeah. Sorry. That allows you to uh, mount uh, pretty much whatever antenna you want and then get one of these highly directional ones and use it to do stuff like finding the source of a signal. So we mm -hmm. even did an episode where we had like a box that had a, a transmitter that was like de and doing bad stuff. And we detected which box it was inside right. using a directional antenna. So that's yeah. really cool and really useful if you ever want to do long range mm -hmm. transmitting or if you want to identify the source of a signal. Yeah, and, and honestly, like a lot of the stuff in this category, I would kind of put in the stocking stuffer kind of category. Mm -hmm. Like these are great little things like, if you can get it, if you think they might like it, and if they hate it, you're out, what, like $20? That's like a nice meal. So it, it's not that much, and um, it can get people to try new things. Um, so, Whoa. sorry, I just remembered like this one. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this we'll, later. We'll, we'll get on to that yeah. later. <laughs> uh, but so the next category we kind of have is SDRs. So if you're not familiar with what that is, it's software-defined radio. Essentially, it's a fancy radio that'll 
allow you to look at a, a vast uh, swath of the radio spectrum. Um, as you can see, they're pretty cheap. Like this kit um, is $34, basically. And it comes with these um, cheap extendable antennas and a little tripod mount. You just plug it right into your computer and you're often listening to all kinds of radio signals. Uh, we have a whole live stream on using that um, from a couple weeks ago. It's pretty cool. You can listen to really basic stuff like uh, FM radio stations. Um, and originally, of course, you could listen to over-the-air TV, which was the kind of original design of these types of devices. However, we've also shown off how you can listen to local police stations. Uh, you could listen in on aircraft, track aircraft. Uh, you can collect images from overhead satellites, all kinds of stuff uh, you can do with that. Uh, you can look into that a little more at the rtlsdr.com uh, website. Mm -hmm. um, but it's at this price level, great stocking stuffer, especially if someone's like maybe interested in radios or radio astronomy or something like that. Yeah, and uh, going off the theme of kind of accessories and things you can buy as add-ons, there's also something we tried out earlier this year, which is the Raspberry Pi high quality camera. Mm -hmm. So this is, I 3D printed a mount for this so that I could use like a standard like Canon, um, can, uh, like 50 millimeter lens, which was really, really cool. Mm -hmm. And I think we did a video on how to set this up, but yeah, it was a really easy integration to just add this to a Raspberry Pi 4. So if you have a Raspberry Pi already and, or if the person you're looking for has a Raspberry Pi and you want them to be able to take on a really fun and cool project, then this has been really interesting to work on and very cool. So if you want to switch over to my screen, um, there's some more details about it. Uh, it's a 12.3 megapixel oh, wait, sensor. Oh, that's my screen. Oh yeah. It's a 12.3 megapixel sensor. Um, it's designed for C and CF mount lenses. I misunderstood this and I thought I had a lens that would work and I didn't. So then I just had to 3D print this mount in order to make it so it could accept Canon ones. And then uh, once I did that, then I found I could mount whatever I wanted on it and it was actually really cool. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of cool projects that feature this camera that are now out after this has been for sale for a while now. So mm -hmm. I recommend this as a good add-on for a Raspberry Pi. Okay. And moving on to our next category, lock picks. So lock picking and lock sport is something a lot of hackers are somewhat interested in, uh, particularly anyone interested in doing physical pen testing or uh, maybe just as an extra hobby uh, to get your dexterity up a little if uh, you, you spend too much time at a keyboard or you know even as like a kind of fun mental challenge, especially as you get into more complicated locks. Um, check your local laws because some yes, municipalities check. have laws against possession of burglary tools, which yes. are very broad, and these may fall mm -hmm. under those classifications. So make sure yeah. that your city and state does not have any restrictions on possessing these. Right. Um, so uh, the, the one I really like, especially as sort of like an everyday carry kind of item, are the Bogata Entry two-piece tool set. Uh, you can get them from like It's Tactical. Um, I think they're they're also on uh, Amazon as well. Uh, pretty good, well, as you can see. They're they're really small. Uh, you can even get these in like titanium, which FYI is non-magnetic and uh, is and they're so small they're easily concealed on the person. So there's all kinds oh. of cool stuff you can do with that as well. Mm -hmm. um, like here they have it um, on a little pin, so you could literally just put it on a pin on your shirt, like under a suit label or something like that, if you want to feel like James Bond. I also accidentally flew many, many times with these in my phone case and just forgot. I'd forgotten yeah. about them and like nobody said anything mm -hmm. to me. I'm not saying you should do that. Don't do that. But if yeah. it happened by accident, to me, it didn't seem like a big deal. So I'm kind of going along that same thread. If you want to get like a wider variety, this is the kind of more like lock sport kind of set um, from Sparrow's Lockpicks. They have a large variety of different uh, lockpick sets that you could look at. Yeah, Sparrow's is a, is a really nice company. Very, mm -hmm. very narrow website, but nice yeah. company. Maybe um, you could enlarge it a little. Um, is it? Sure. Command plus plus. Yeah. There, we, there go. we go. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, any of these, like in the kind of like 20 to $50, there's also some cheaper ones you could get on Amazon, but those are going to be maybe sketchy Chinese stuff. Uh, so something to be aware of. Um, also from It's Tactical, if you want to be like, if they're like James, if they like James Bond and that kind of stuff, and you want to feed into that, um, there's the Urban Escape and Evasion kind of kits, <laughs> oh uh, which includes, uh, so uh, these are like 
handcuff shims, handcuff keys, you know, a compass. Okay. Stuff well, like that. This is, yeah, so that's no longer lock sport. But yeah, as you yeah. can see, it's a, it's a well, tactical... technically it would be lock sport, because, like, breaking out of handcuffs could fall in that. But yes, yeah, I, I understand. It depends on what kind of sport you're, you're in, into, I, right. I suppose. Um, so, still within this price point, there is also... One thing I want to uh, point out that I recently got, as you can see, I got two of them, so I've been playing with the other one. Mm. But Adafruit has recently come out with a line of circuit Python, Python boards that are really cheap and use the ESP32. Mm -hmm. So I got a couple of the first ones that came out. I just am going to pull this hopefully out of the bag. But this is the Metro ESP32 uh, S2 Express. Mm -hmm. So the ESP32 S2 is a really exciting board that allows you to have native USB when you plug it in. So unlike some of the previous circuit python boards mm -hmm. where you had to do a bunch of like funky like serial stuff this just shows up as a usb drive and you just drag and drop your code onto it so it's yeah. really easy for beginners um i really like micro and circuit python and i picked up one of these as soon as they came on sale but really this is the esp32 uh, s2 that mm -hmm. you're looking for so adafruit has a lot of different products that feature the esp32 i'm i'm not even gonna go yeah straight. um i think um, a lot of those are sold out right now so just not all of them to be aware of. no there's there's two boards that are not sold okay. out um but you'll and you'll find that they'll be restocking them and stuff but the ESP32 S, uh, S2 is a mm. really cool board that does support CircuitPython, and Adafruit is doing a, mm -hmm. a decent job of documentation. I've had a hard time getting uh, a couple things up and running, but by and large, this is a really cool mm -hmm. way for somebody who knows a little bit of Python, maybe, to start working with microcontrollers if they don't want to do Arduino and they don't want to do some of the other stuff. So if you yeah. have some Python experience and you want to start working with microcontrollers and Wi-Fi, which is really exciting mm -hmm. and cool, then check out this board because it's a lot easier to work with than some of the previous CircuitPython or MicroPython boards that have been out there. Like yeah. we've been teaching um, how to do this on the ESP8266, and it is like a little mm -hmm. hard for beginners to get started with. This is much more simple. Um, and just along those same lines, I'm going to go to my screen. Uh, we have hacker boxes. So a lot of these are kind of what I would deem more the maker side of things. Um, and this is perfect if you really want to look for a subscription um, to give. So that way they're not getting the gift just then, you, you know, using it for a week or two and then forgetting about it. Um, you know, it's a nice way to give a gift that they're going to get throughout the year. If you were to do like a monthly subscription, it's like $44 a month, a little pricey, but I mean, you can, um, I believe send every couple months or something like that. Um, so a lot of these boxes will have things like, you know, starting up, uh, your electronic workstation. So if you know, they're starting to get into, uh, microcontrollers and physical hardware, it's a good little boost, um, to their workstation. Maybe they're getting into soldering. Um, you can go back and see a lot of these previous boxes they've done uh, with uh, Adafruit Circuit Play Playground and that uh, MicroPython or CircuitPython, um, those sorts of things. So definitely something to consider if you want to go a little more along the like subscription box or like a holistic kind of kit approach. So let's say that you also have like $50 and you're interested in microcontrollers mm -hmm. and you don't want just one. Let's say you want, I don't know, 25 microcontrollers for that price. Yeah. Well, guess what? Provided AliExpress. you have a month or two to wait, <laughs> check, we can go to my screen and see what I like to do whenever I'm depressed. I like to buy roughly a hundred of these, but yeah. I don't necessarily recommend you do that. If you have the mm -hmm. time, you can pick up one of these three versions of the ESP8266. Mm -hmm. And I've tried these all, so let me explain the difference. This is the original version. You'll pick this up for around a dollar eighty, sometimes two bucks, if uh, you get a good deal, mm -hmm. and you will wait a while. But when it gets there, you're gonna have a lot of these microcontrollers to fry as you learn. Now, mm -hmm. this is the D1 Mini Pro. Uh, it has this special port right here that allows you, if you want to, to attach an antenna, provided you're also mm -hmm. willing to resolder this horrible, tiny little zero ohm resistor over to this pad instead. I have yeah. broken several of these trying to do that because it is, a, it is incredibly tiny. It's not clear and obvious in this picture how tiny it is, but it's very tiny. So while mm -hmm. this is great and it has this awesome little ceramic antenna that I think does a little bit better than the on-chip antenna, you'll typically find this one for around 250 or so. So it's a little bit more expensive. And then if we look over here, mm -hmm. oh, this one actually just has a uh, more uh, oh, wow, yeah. I didn't, there's a more RAM version. That's really cool. So that if you need more RAM, then you can do that. But the D1 Mini also has a version 3.0. Uh, 
This mm -hmm. you'll notice is not a module soldered onto a PCB. Everything's just dropped on the PCB. So right. it's all integrated. So these are a little slimmer if you have a project that needs to be a little slimmer. And you'll typically find this somewhere between the range of the other two. But these are the D1 minis that you'll find available mm -hmm. for sale on AliExpress. Yeah. And you can get a lot of them for this $50 budget. So if you're yeah. looking to maybe have someone who's interested in electronics, but a little clumsy, maybe <laughs> they, they fry stuff sometimes. Well, no worries. Yeah. Don't go on Amazon and get them three. Get them 27 for the same price. Honestly, though, I would kind of put this more in the category of a present for yourself. <laughs> like I, I would like certainly you could get a handful of these. Um, the nice thing about D1 minis is they can be used for so many different projects, especially if you're doing like IoT sensor projects, um, D author stuff like that. Um, great for that. Um, but if you if you don't explicitly need a ton of them for like you're doing a ton of D1 mini projects, like um, then I, I maybe would stick away from that. But I respectfully disagree. If anybody is interested in, for example, Stefan's D author projects, mm -hmm. then uh, this is a great way to try it out without the worry right. of, you know, if you leave one somewhere to do something, then whatever. If you, know, you step someone, on the pins, like little if you Lego crush the pins, Or if you're learning to solder and you burn yeah. the absolute stuff out of it. Right. Like, and I think that's a, a good reason to get like, you know, five or ten of them. Yeah. Um, but moving on. Um, so everyone loves hacker swag. So one of my favorite websites for hacker swag is zero D zero day clothing. Um, they actually have a ton of like swag that's computer related, but you know, they got a bunch of cool stuff. If you want to like throw in a, a, a t-shirt, like that's always a nice thing, especially, um, you know, some of these funny ones like fear the DDoS attack. And then it's like, you know, um, what, what was that arcade game? You know, the one where you pew, pew, pew. Whatever. Um, space Invaders. Yeah, Space Invaders. Thank you. Uh, you know, Fear the, <laughs> fear the Botnet. Uh, there's all kinds of fun ones here. Uh, Some of those are fun. Yeah. But I, like I'm saying, you know, it, for like $20 or whatever. Yeah, show, off, show off that you're a big nerd from a distance. Yeah. So. Responsible disclosure is killing the zero day industry. Oh my gosh. Uh, you know, that, that stuff can be fun. Uh, so if you want to take a little more humorous approach, you know, someone's in IT or something like that, definitely something to look into. So my next recommendation is if you like any of the projects we've featured with mm -hmm. the Wi-Fi Duck and or the Wi-Fi Deauthor, I think I have, oh yeah, and you don't want your Wi-Fi Duck to look like this soldered together mess that I made by hand, then you can actually buy the finished boards from our friend's store. So Stefan has his own web store. And I think, oh yes, I, uh, we've actually received some that we've purchased because mm -hmm. we, uh, yeah, invested in these because they're so good. And uh, one of the most, oh, here's one. One of the most recent things that we have received is this uh, Andromeda D author. And you'll notice that unlike the, the D1 minis we were just showing off, this can have mm -hmm. any antenna mounted to it. So I can and have mounted this little thing mm -hmm. to this giant antenna and used it to get highly directional range. So this is really cool. So if you know anybody that's interested in Wi-Fi research or Wi-Fi hacking, or if you want a slick Wi-Fi duck that is a little bit better put together than this, mm -hmm. then you can purchase those. Um, I think that the Wi-Fi ducks actually might be sold out, but right now I'm gonna switch over to my screen. You can still pick up the uh, Deauthor Andromeda, the one I'm holding in my hand. Mm -hmm. And these boards are really cool. I participated in the development of them. So I was just like, hey, what if we could make these directional? So mm -hmm. it was possible to not only hone it in on a specific area and get incredible range, but also be able to detect the source mm -hmm. of, of something or be able to, uh, oh, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Uh, or be able to actually, um, you know, like establish where something was coming from. So both range and direction directionality, and also just the ability to amplify uh, with a bigger mm -hmm. uh, DBI antenna was kind of the intention of this project, and also making it USB friendly. So this can be mm -hmm. plugged into any USB drive, uh, or you know, stuck into a USB Type C adapter and plugged into this MacBook Pro, yeah. and uh, you can just start working with it using the Hunator, a software companion program that runs on all platforms. Uh, mm -hmm right away. So I think this is one of the best ways to get started with Wi-Fi hacking. Like if I want to just plug this in and create like a hundred Wi-Fi networks mm -hmm. that are just, I don't know, rickrolling people. It's 
It's yeah. only a couple commands. Uh, in fact, it's a single command once you learn how mm -hmm. to uh, start putting them together with this device. So, so if really you cool. could only give one Wi-Fi hacking gift, would you give one of these or would you give uh, Alpha Mon? Uh... That's a great question. So the difference between this and this is you need a Linux computer with this. Mm -hmm. You cannot really use it without a Linux computer the yeah. way that we're talking about using it. So with this, you can use it on any computer. You can also do a bunch of stuff that this can do but mm -hmm. might not be, you'd have to use a third party program. And so it's you would annoying. go with the Andromeda or a deauthor in general? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think that the way that the deauthor V3 is configured, you plug this thing in, it's automatically detected, and you're off hacking Wi Fi networks or creating mm -hmm. your own fake networks. And you can use companion programs like uh, Wireshark to use your mm -hmm. own computer's wireless network adapter to, for example, record the handshakes that are, are generated by this deauthing mm -hmm. someone or record which networks. Uh, different nearby devices are trying to connect to. And then from that information, you can pop up a fake Wi-Fi network and capture people's devices. So lots mm -hmm. of cool stuff you can do with this. We covered a lot of them on the show and they are available for sale um, in Europe from Stefan's store here. Uh, and if you want to buy them in the US, there's a link to do this uh, on the store as well. Yeah. Um, okay. And uh, here we go. One more. Oh no. There we go. Um, yeah, so moving on. I know Cody's going to make fun of these. But... Yeah, so if you want to look like a giant dork and have yes. to explain to your friends what you're wearing constantly, then uh, there are glasses uh, designed for computer eye strain. Um, mm. So if you do have a loved one in your life who is Has always... never heard of Flux. ...squinting at a computer mm -hmm. and maybe doesn't use dark mode as often as they should, uh, then this is something that you could do that's sweet and considerate and also will get Allows them you to pump them in all the time. Any time that, uh, <laughs> that they cross you. Yes. Yes. Um, but, you, you know, if you are worried Everybody about that... Everybody knows that something gamers something. are the most discriminated against yeah, people. Yeah, but basically it's just Gunner Glasses is the most popular brand. There's plenty of other brands. Um, you can look them up under a variety of, like, terms, like gaming glasses, computer glasses, um, blue... Uh, filter glasses, stuff like that. Um, but onward, if you do have someone that is extra paranoid in your life um, or does a lot of uh, stuff with radio emission, then uh, Mission Darkness is a company that creates Faraday bags. If you're not familiar with a, what a Faraday cage is, essentially it blocks uh, radio spectrum transmissions. Um, so these Faraday bags are great. Um, you know, if you're going through somewhere where you don't know what your cell phone's transmitting and you don't want it to be vulnerable to a beacon swarm attack like Cody does, then you can shove it in this uh, Faraday bag and no Wi-Fi, no cell, nothing's oh, going to yeah. go in and out. I wouldn't be able to steal their beacons. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you wouldn't be able to use your phone as you normally would while it's in the bag because it's not going to receive any signal. But, you know, it is a great thing for the specific purposes, even if you have it in your lab just for testing. Like, okay, I want to see, is, is that the right Wi-Fi device I'm detecting? Just shove it in the bag real quick. Okay, it disappeared. That's the one. I'm, you know, that kind of thing. Actually, at DEF CON, I also got some business cards that were actually like paper mm -hmm. sleeves for your individual cards that you could also use. Mm -hmm. And they, I tested them. They right. actually work. And, and that's, um, this is great too. Um, I think they m might also make some wallet forms. Um, that's more for the contactless credit card and IF, uh, RFID uh, identification cards for like uh, checking into a business or, or something like that that a lot of um, the, the smarter ID cards are, are actually nowadays. So I have to then, the next thing is shout out these really cool modules that are ESP32 mm -hmm. cameras. So this is a, I think this is a USB type C version that's a tiny bit more expensive than the ones I'm going to show on my screen, but it actually functions just the same way. Mm -hmm. It's just easier to interface with. These ESP32 cameras are awesome. You can run all sorts of stuff on them. You can connect them to smart mm -hmm. homes and there's firmware available for them that allows you to basically set these up as little security, Wi-Fi security cameras and put mm -hmm. them everywhere. Now, of course, you can also hack them off the network, intercept footage from them and hack them. And that's why I bought a bunch of them so that I could use them mm -hmm. for an upcoming, at some point when I have time, uh, Wi-Fi hacking class where we go over hacking cameras and all the different stuff you can mm -hmm. do to them. Now, these are so cheap that if you switch to my screen, you can pick up a two-pack of them on Amazon for like $18, uh, $19. Yeah, and I think we used them in the facial recognition episode as well. Yes, so these ones, uh, not all of them, but these ones on my screen right here 
actually support basic facial recognition, which is really cool. So if you want to play around with facial recognition and stuff, then very you can, cheap. Yeah, you can do that for very cheap. Now, these ones are so cheap because they don't have USB. They just have pens mm. sticking out of them. So you need an additional module, this one right here, actually, in order to interface with it mm -hmm. right there. But if you just look for, for example, USB type C, ESP32, then you can mm -hmm. find these slightly more expensive cameras that support, uh, that do support USB type C, but don't support facial recognition. Uh, can you name that? I don't think you've explicitly named that yet. This is an M5 stack uh, camera. So okay. the ESP32 M5 stack camera that mm -hmm. takes USB type C, unless it specifically says it has mm -hmm. PS RAM, does not support facial recognition. But if it says mm -hmm. it has PS RAM, and those are the ones that are a little bit more pricey, more like $30, $40, mm -hmm. uh, the, the ones that say they have PS RAM will support facial recognition. Okay. Um, did you have anything else in the under $50 category? Otherwise, we're going to kind of um, move on up to the bigger, like, Raspberry gifts. Pi Zero is a constant. If you mm -hmm. guys want a lower price version of the Raspberry Pi, you can pick these up uh, for really W. Cheap. The Raspberry uh, Pi Zero Yeah, w. Raspberry Pi Zero W. So the Raspberry yeah. Pi Zero W has a wireless network adapter, so it's very useful for all the kinds of stuff you would want to do mm -hmm. uh, with a Raspberry Pi. It's just, of course, a bit slower and much smaller, but mm -hmm. that makes it ideal for all sorts of cool applications. My favorite being um, Sammy's um, Skyhook. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, no, wait, not Skyhook. Um, it, whatever it is, it's a project where one drone is able to take over another drone <laughs> by hacking its Wi-Fi network mm -hmm. and then connecting it to the drone instead and then remotely steer it, yeah. which is uh, Skyjack. Yeah, honestly, if as far as like gifts and, and such, um, that's a good one. Uh, although uh, in the next category, we're going to go over uh, kind of more powerful Raspberry Pis. And if the person doesn't have a Raspberry Pi already, I would stick with the slightly higher priced ones because uh, they're going to give you much better performance. Yeah, but here you can see on my screen that on, on Amazon, you can get, you know, for 18 bucks, one right, of these Raspberry Pis. Right. So if I had to say, you know, get one of these or get one of these, mm -hmm. and they didn't already have a Linux computer, this is yeah. a Linux computer with a compatible wireless network adapter. All yeah. in one. Yeah, um, especially that's actually even kind of better than like this. It, it, like if you uh, started. chucked uh, Kali Linux on that, that would be a good way to kind of get introduced to that if you're really on a budget. Yes. Um, but moving on, it will get talk, hot. talking about Wi-Fi hacking. Um, here's actually a really cool product that I like. Uh, it's called the Dope Scope, uh, uh, the 2.0 version uh, specifically. Essentially, what it is is it is a D1 Mini. Um, with a uh, directional antenna installed and then a little screen and a uh, eyepiece so that you can pull it up to your eye and you can actually have a sort of VR experience of the Wi-Fi signal strength around you. So, you know, uh, Cody was talking about like, you know, being able to detect if a Wi-Fi access point is in a particular package or something like that. Um, this is great for that. Um, when I was first finding out about this at the conference, what we actually did is a fox hunt. So we had one guy with a backpack with an access point in it walking around a conference and we were all had our dope scopes and we had to find that guy. And, you know, it was really fun. And also, I think it's a really cool tool to track down uh, maybe some of those rogue access points that might be around um, your place. Mm -hmm. um, you can kind of see down here, like what that screen looks like. So it'll tell you like all the SSIDs, like the signal strength and give you a graph, all kinds of cool stuff. So Definitely something cool to look into if someone's getting a little more into the Wi-Fi stuff and they want something uh, maybe a little more exotic. So for my next one, uh, I have the new Raspberry Pi series, um, the Pi 4 kits that you mm -hmm. can pick up. Uh, I So there's a lot of different kits that are out there. Um, if you want to switch over to my screen, I really like um, Canakit as a mm -hmm. supplier just because they put a lot of thought into their stuff and they also are really responsive. Uh, so I've spoken to them several times via email, and they're always really nice about just supporting stuff and recommending mm -hmm. stuff. And they're pretty knowledgeable about like why people are buying these, like to run Kali Linux and stuff like that. Yeah. So I really like their kits. And if you're looking to buy a Raspberry Pi 4, um, you know, this is a good way to make sure you mm -hmm. have all the stuff necessary uh, because there are some things that have yeah. changed with the Raspberry Pi 4. For example, if you just get a Raspberry Pi 4, do you have this tiny, like, uh, what is this? The USB, or sorry, uh, HDMI micro? Mi no, that's... Nano? That's Nano, I yeah. think. 
like, do you have this, like, stupid little, like, nano uh, yeah. adapter? Like, no, you probably don't. So mm -hmm. it's uh, it's really annoying to, like, get one of these things and then realize you have to go shopping for a second series of products. Yeah. So if you're looking to buy a kit, then uh, you can find ones that are a little bit less elaborate but mm -hmm. have the basic stuff. And Canon Kit's really good at having suggestions for stuff yeah. that just works all together. Yeah, um, honestly, if you... Uh, if the person you're wanting to buy a gift for um, maybe doesn't use Linux yet or is interested in Linux but hasn't tried it, um, a Raspberry Pi kit like this, uh, any one of the ones in like the $75 to a little over $100 range are going to be great, especially the Pi 4 8 gigabyte version is going to be uh, super powerful. It is the most powerful Raspberry Pi right now. Uh, there's also the new Raspberry Pi 400, which is like an integrated keyboard and all of that. Um, so that's a cool option as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would say if you want to have someone, if you want to make someone who wants to run Linux stuff happy, get at least the Raspberry Pi uh, 4, 4 gigabyte. Mm -hmm. That's the minimum to run uh, some of the newer stuff that's coming out. Mm -hmm. Like the, I think it's like the 64 uh, bit version Ubuntu. of um, Kali Linux. Oh, okay. They, uh, they yeah. released for the Raspberry Pi. But you need to have a, a certain minimum mm -hmm. amount of uh, RAM. So yeah. yeah, more RAM never hurts. Yep. Um, but moving on to my other thing is if you do want to give the gift of an education, um, of course, there's always things like you to me and stuff like that. But if you want, if they're like more into physical, like reading books and stuff like that, No Starch Press is really a great option. They have a wide variety of books on hacking and even Linux and BSD. Um, so, you know, you kind of have to use a little judgment about like what they might be interested in, or you could just uh, give them a uh, gift card for No Start to Press or something like that. But all these books are kind of in like the $30 to $50 range. Um, and most of them will wa uh, usually walk you through everything. So like, you know, uh, from basically being a noob to being an expert in a certain subject or something. Mm -hmm. uh, so definitely something to look into. Uh, the gift of knowledge never hurt anyone, right? As it were. Yeah, and there's a, a bunch of really, really good books on this. Uh, do you, do you like have them? a particular favorite, or? Um, no, yeah. I don't. Um, I've I've seen a lot of really good ones. I read a couple good ones, but I I couldn't pick between them honestly. Right. I have that um gray hat Python book too. Nice. I even made it all the way halfway through it. Um. So all right. So my so going over now the hundred dollar line into yes. our. 100 to 350 dollar line mm -hmm. i have my favorite gift that i've ever received ever uh so fortunately the, i did not get it yeah no well you still have time uh so the creality ender 3 pro is a 3d printer that is affordable easy to work with and there's tons of documentation on it. in fact the sheer amount of stuff you can print from it to just upgrade it is pretty mm -hmm. startling so if you can switch over to my screen uh this the Ender 3 Pro comes in at around $230 or so, but you can sometimes find it for even cheaper, mm -hmm. more around like $200. And the Pro version has a, mag a magnetic bed, which means you don't have mm -hmm. to clip stuff onto it. And I really, really prefer that. It also has a heated bed, which means if you mm -hmm. get a enclosure or something to keep the temperature constant, then it allows you to be able to print mm -hmm. things that are a little bit more difficult to print with a lower end printer. Now, I know that there's some cheaper printers out there, but I really, really like this one. And it's performed mm -hmm. exceedingly well in the tests that I've done. So uh, for this price range, I would say this is one of the best 3D printers I have worked with. And I've worked with a bunch at my school's lab. I've seen mm -hmm. the kinds of problems that it causes when people mess them up and how much time it takes to repair them. And I have really messed my printer up many mm -hmm. times and been able to repair it in relatively short order. So. This is a great printer and you're able to print a lot of highly functional things mm -hmm. all the way from bird feeders to uh, much more industrial style prints. Yeah, um, okay. And moving on, if you do have someone that is interested in SDRs, like they're beyond, they already have an RTL SDR, uh, the, the next step for them would be this uh, Kerberos SDR. Uh, essentially what it is, is it is for uh, of the R uh, RTL SDRs that we showed before combined together. And what's important is it allows you to sync the time across of them. And it'll, it gives you this really powerful ability to have four antennas. And if you arrange them in a certain pattern, then you can time the difference in arrival of the radio signal between all the antennas. And you can get a bearing on where that radio signal came from, which is incredibly powerful. Uh, for example, uh, one demonstration they did was being able to track down 
uh, people that were spoofing GPS signals. So one of the things you can do is you can um, make a radio that pretends to be a GPS satellite and it throws off the GPS location of everyone you know, for a mile or two around. Um, by going around with a Kerberos SDR to three different locations and get three, three bearings and putting them on a map, you're able to pinpoint the location of where that rogue GPS uh, radio would be. Mm -hmm. uh, that's only one particular example. You can do all kinds of other things uh, with triangulating uh, radio signals. So very, very interesting. Um, additionally, you can look at wider uh, swaths of the spectrum. So if someone does have an uh, RTL SDR, uh, this is a pretty good upgrade. It's a little expensive, uh, $250, so this is like a serious present. Um, but if you know they're into the radio, it's a good option. Um, kind of going on from there, uh, there is the Hack RF. So the benefit of the Hack RF if, is it is capable of receive and transmit, which means that it can not only receive those signals, but uh, also transmit them out. It's a transponder. Yeah. Well, uh, well, and then also it has a very wide swath of spectrum available mm -hmm. to it. Uh, I think it's one to six gigahertz, um, but you'd have to check. Um, again, it's an expensive side, 319. You can try to go on AliExpress and get some knockoff Chinese versions, um, and those will be a little cheaper. Those are gonna be closer to $150. Um, consider time it would take to get here about a month, uh, maybe a little longer during the holiday seasons, um, something to consider. However, as Cody was alluding to, it's only capable of receiving or transmitting. It can't do both simultaneously. If your uh, individual you're getting presents for is really doing like, um, using like radios to, to, to um, talk with people or uh, doing active stuff that involves receiving and transmitting simultaneously, then something you might want to look into is the Lime SDR. The Lime SDR is right there around that $350 price as well. However, it is capable of uh, receiving and transmitting simultaneously. It doesn't have quite the, the spectrum available to it that the Hack RF does, but uh, still a solid option for someone that's doing a little more active SDR stuff. So one option that I can't believe we almost forgot also is the Hack5 Wi-Fi Pineapple. Mm -hmm. So they just came out with a new version, which is the Wi-Fi Pineapple Mark 7, I believe. And on my screen, you can see that uh, you can buy these uh, very easily from the Hack5 store, and they allow you to do all sorts of really exciting Wi-Fi stuff. They have, or well, network stuff in general. Mm -hmm. So they also have a really user-friendly uh, web interface, which is great, and they're integrated into Hack5's uh, command and control platform, which is yeah. also super cool. So if you want to check out a really great Wi-Fi offensive pen test device, then Hack5 always mm -hmm. creates great devices and uh, you can see, oh yeah, they have um, a, a sale on Cyber Monday. Yeah. So uh, you might even be able to get one of these uh, for less than this price category on Cyber mm -hmm. Monday. So be sure to check that out when it comes around. Yeah, and honestly, um, Hack5 has a lot of great products and a lot of different uh, field kits. So if there's anyone that's getting into hack hacking and they don't already have that stuff, all of those are pretty solid options. Um, we'll actually go to the Hack5 shop later, and I was just going to spend you know, a couple minutes there. Um, oh, yeah. And also, uh, speaking on uh, Michael's point of people who might be interested in radio stuff, if yes. you want to motivate someone who's interested in getting a radio license to get one, you can grab them one of these Baofeng radios that are mm -hmm. illegal to use on certain frequencies unless you have a license. Unless so, you have a ham license. Yeah. yeah. So if they don't want the police to come when they use it, then then they'll need to. Well, you might just switch to the screen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you don't want the police to come when you use it, then you need to get a radio license. So. Yes. Again, these are great gifts. They're cheap mm -hmm. and you can find them all over the place, but certain spectrums that they can access also mm -hmm. require licensing. So oh. if you have a ham in your life yeah. and you uh, want to throw them an extra Baofeng, I don't think any one of them are going to object to yeah, that. Yeah, fun thing is the Kerberos SDR that I was just talking about is the kind of thing that the FCC would use to track you down when you press the wrong button. <laughs> so, uh, or, you know, a fun thing you could do is if you have multiple people, you know, you get them all this and then you get a Kerberos SDR and then you go hide in the woods and play hide and seek <laughs> with the radio. Um, Scary. But going over to my screen, along these radio spectrum uh, things is the Proxmark 3. Now, uh, this is really a, a kind of niche device, but if you do have someone that is very interested in like, cloning IDs, 
um, cloning like credit cards and anything that's like NFC or F RFID, RFID. Yeah. then this is like something they would love. RFID hacking is also awesome. I've mm -hmm. seen demonstrations of this, like where they're cloning people's like access cards to buildings yeah. and stuff like that. It's really, really cool. They so actually, this yeah. can study everything from yeah. like Metro cards to like cards that are exchanging data when you like put mm -hmm. them in proximity to a reader. This is a device you want to start studying that stuff, interacting with it and doing right. interesting research with RFID. Yeah, yeah, it'll allow you to clone cards, which is really cool. I think they demonstrated in the video down here. I'm not gonna play it now. Um, but so if you have someone in your life that's interested in that, again, expensive, we're talking serious gift here, but you know, if you have the money def and they're interested, definitely something worth the look. Yep. All right. So I think that that rounds out the category of up to $350. Uh -huh. So from now on, we're going to be talking about stuff that is $350 and up, although we yes. don't have too many of those things. Although, so you can imagine one well, of them Well, we have one more category after that, and that is... The gifts, yeah. The, yeah, the gifts for people where price doesn't matter. Yeah, that's true. Um, so I have one that I'm actually pretty excited about that is not currently, um, or actually no, it is shipping because mm -hmm. I've seen people receive it. So um, this is a really awesome continuous belt 3D printing mill. And what this, uh, sorry, let's, let's call it by its right name, an infinite Z volume mm -hmm. 3D printer um that allows you to make things that are incredibly long so this has a little conveyor belt that allows you to print objects that are huge and they mm. can just go on and on and on and on and on so i have been watching this product for quite some time i'm really excited about it and watching the things that people have made with it has been really mm -hmm. impressive also the creality team after working with the ender pro 3 uh, and then watching how they've been developing this printer and all the mm -hmm. stuff they've done in order to make it actually become a real thing uh, has inspired me with a lot of confidence with them. They really care about their product. Mm -hmm. They fix stuff immediately and they're testing this as best they can to, and making sure that it is open source and available for everybody to hack on and use. So if you want to support the maker community and if you want to support the open source community and also a really great maker that I really like, Naomi Wu, then I recommend you check out this uh, new 3D printer. And it doesn't cost $820. Uh, $1,000, you guys, don't worry. <laughs> it's cheaper than that. Oh my God, that's yeah. expensive. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you can take a look at this. I, I was looking at the price earlier. It's I think it's it's over 350 but it's like mm -hmm. not that much over. So this is a really impressive printer for not that much of a price. And you can support mm -hmm. it on uh, Kickstarter because that is currently where it is. So yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so probably one of the biggest gifts you can possibly get, and something we always get asked, is what laptop to get. Um, so my current recommendation is the Dell XPS 13 Developer Edition. The Developer Edition just means that it is specifically designed to have Linux, Linux running on it. So that means you can run Ubuntu uh, for a little more user-friendly uh, kind of environment, or if you're really into hacking, you can put Kali, or you can dual boot or some variation thereof. Um, it, it's the the 13 means it's 13 inch screen. Um, honestly, though, if you are going to be doing this kind of big purchase, you know, maybe you're buying a group for a person or something like that. Um, I would encourage you to do a little more research, um, and you can figure it out for yourself uh, what might be the best option because there, there's a ton of different customizations. Like, and you can really bump that price up there if you go, you know, all out. Um, maxing out the settings as it were um but kind of moving on from there if you do have someone in your life where you know maybe you all have an agreement where you you don't buy gifts for each other for the holidays or um, maybe like they have everything like they don't really need anything else it would just be more junk that would stay in a closet somewhere all year um then that's kind of where i get into the category that i deem like any amount and really what I'm talking about there is uh, doing a donation to uh, organization in someone's name. Mm -hmm. um, the two I really like um, for this are the EFF, the Electronic Freedom Foundation. Yeah. Front, yeah. Yeah. And then um, Women in uh, Cybersecurity. Um, so I'll pull those up real quick. But both of those are great uh, 5013C nonprofits. Um, so you can donate, you know. Ten dollars, or you know, five hundred thousand dollars in someone's name, and I think they would really appreciate it, especially if they're into security. 
and often kind of you things. get like you know some swag with your especially right. with the EFF you can get like a shirt or some other stuff with your donation just to rep the organization mm -hmm. and let people know you care about it and in particular I would back the EFF they do incredible work um, the ACLU also does really yeah. good work yeah. and um, when it comes to fighting for digital rights and privacy mm -hmm. uh, both of these organizations are heavily involved uh, yeah. both in terms of like pursuing lawsuits that actually cause meaningful change and mm -hmm. making sure that people are aware of the threats to their freedom and privacy. Right. So I think that you know the EFF in particular does an outstanding amount of work for how small their organization is. Yeah. And uh, donating to them anytime you can is a great way to show your support. Absolutely. Uh, did we have anything else? Or did no, I, I got to go buy this 3D printing. <laughs> There's a, I, this run is almost sold out. I got to get in. Yeah, the I get in. That's the problem with Kickstarters is you, you miss out on the early bird. Oh my god, there's only 10 of them left. Ah! Ah! Okay, well, anyway, okay. that's been, been our great. episode <laughs> today. Hopefully, we were able to give you some good ideas on what that hacker in your life might like for the holidays. Yeah, and thank you to everyone who hangs out with us, hangs out with us on our live streams. These are always super fun. If you want to catch us, you can go to hackingwithfriends.com to see all of our upcoming streams and also the ones that we've done recently in case you mix one, miss one. And if you want to be signed up for our alerts, you can also put your email into our sign up. You'll also be entered to win one of our prizes, mm -hmm. which we announce on our live streams every other Wednesday. Cool. Cool. We'll see y'all some Tuesdays and Fridays in the future, hopefully. <laughs> all right. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.